And here we are inside the super sleek demo room for NVIDIA Graphics. I'm joined here today with Samir Dillon, the technical marketing manager for NVIDIA. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you so much for yeah. meeting with us, David. I gotta say, man, this looks absolutely stellar on this TV. This is this uh, is all NVIDIA? Yep, yeah. This is actually the division running on a 1080 Ti graphics card, and you can see the level of production value of detail <laughs> yeah. you can get from it our latest stunning. graphics cards. It looks absolutely stunning. And you can actually try it out if you really want. Oh yes, I do. Thank you so much. Go for it. I'm nerding out right now. <laughs> so you can see the level of detail as you add today a dynamic game like Division renders. Mm. But this is all possible today and you can get this today uh, at any retail store. You can buy a graphics card and mm -hmm. get to buy the game together. You're here inside the NVIDIA Demo Center, so we actually wanted to show you what's possible with our latest and greatest GPUs. I would love to. Thank you so much. So I thought I'll actually introduce our chips first and this is our latest and greatest chip right here. Mm -hmm. This one's called Volta. May I? Yeah, go for oh, it. Thanks. It's actually the world's largest most complicated parallel processor ever designed for mass production. It's beautiful. Yep. So you're familiar with four cores in your pocket right now with your cell phones? Uh, maybe of course. Eight cores on I got eight computer. cores just yep, saying. Yep. Uh, this chip right here packs 5,122 <laughs> oh processing cores. Yeah. Holy cow. <laughs> that is incredible. 5,122. Uh, 122. Out uh, of control. Yep. Uh, what do we got next? Uh, so the next, we actually make full-size computers, which are the size of a fingertip. I don't believe it. Yep. So this is our Jetson platform, and it has both a CPU and a GPU inside it, only consumes 7.5 watts of power, and delivers up to wow. one teraflop of compute. How would you use uh, this day to day? It's leverage all across the board uh, for intelligent robots, mm -hmm. for autonomous drones, mm -hmm. uh, and even to some extent to do aerial inspections. Wonderful. But you'll actually be surprised. Uh, we actually sell cards and platforms, never the chips. OK. So gamers fundamentally are know us for this. Mm -hmm. This is our biggest and baddest of them all, called Titan XP. And, and it's beautiful. Uh, in this case, we have a very similar GPU, and this one's our Tesla P40. Okay. They both encompass the same GPU, but are very different form factors. Okay. Whereas that is for a gamer, mm -hmm. he has LED lights, aesthetic design, fans mm -hmm. to keep things cool, and even sure. display ports. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas this card won't even have display ports, I have see. fan because it sits in the data center, it's passively data cooled. Center. Yeah, and okay. only computes okay. numbers for you. Right, but the right, same right. technology across the board. I see. And uh, if I may ask, where do the names come from, the Titan X and Tesla? Uh, we actually name our, our architectures and our few, few of our cards based on physicists. Mm. So uh, that's why that one was called Volta. The Volta, The recent yeah. architecture is called Pascal. Mm -hmm. uh, the card was named after uh, Tesla's. Mm -hmm. uh, and we actually started naming it before he started. Oh, that's fantastic. Good for so, you guys, man. Yeah. Great work. Looks beautiful. Super powerful. I'm going to take this with me. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> so in this case, uh, our biggest chip uh, for artificial intelligence had to be packaged and we had to go out and build a special supercomputer. Mm -hmm. And the one right next to me is actually the most amount of compute you can get from a tra traditional household. Okay. Mm -hmm. What are we talking here? So we're talking about a set standard gaming power supply, 1500 watts. But this box is called the DGX Station and gives you equal in compute to 150 servers. 150 servers, yep. wow. Uh, this one gives you 480 trillion operations <laughs> per second. Per second. <laughs> I mean, these numbers are just making me laugh. It's out of control. Yep. Uh, so would someone use this? Uh, exactly. To play games on? To, uh, I mean, what would they use this for? I think that would be pretty shabby for it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, somebody would, uh, a deep learning engineer would definitely love to have one of these so that he can train his artificial intelligence and neural networks on the fly. I see. Okay. And we'll show you examples why platforms like these are so imp important to the industry today. When you say deep learning, um, I, we'll get into uh, details in here in a minute, but what is that exactly? So uh, uh, deep learning is an art form of artificial intelligence mm -hmm. where instead of writing a set of instructions for your computer, uh, which is typically called a program, mm -hmm. we give it large sets of data so that the computer can pick and choose what set of instructions to use for the program. Okay. So it's data versus you hand coding something. Right. So uh, apart from the hardware introduction, let's get into what's possible with our Volta chips in terms of yes. gaming. Yes, yes, please. So uh, let's move this to the side. So now everything that you would experience up on the big screen is actually going to be rendered on a Volt GPU. Mm -hmm. ah, sorry. And each one of those details, uh, you can actually see the level of production value that a GPU today would render. Okay. Ho! Oh. <laughs> Ooh. 
Whoa. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, you weren't kidding about the detail. So you can see if you have technologies like subsurface and this is And this is in the game. Yeah, this is in the game. I'm controlling the Whoa. whole experience. Uh, we have technologies like MDL, where in different materials look like different materials. Mm -hmm. Leather would look like leather. Uh, metal would look like metal. Fur would look like fur. Uh, we have technologies for simulating wind uh, and even wow. different types of skin materials. So uh, his skin actually looks accurate. It so does. Oh my God, you get close. The lips, the nose, the yeah. eyes. So you can kind of see the level of production value uh, that a yeah. game can deliver today. Most and definitely. It's a fully dynamic experience. I can even control time of day, look at it from different angles, all being simulated on a GPU simultaneously. That is incredible. So to encompass a great gaming experience, there are two fundamental pillars here at NVIDIA. Uh -huh. One being simulation, uh, which is done on our Tesla GPUs, and mm -hmm. the other being rendering, for, which is our pillar for Quadro GPUs. Mm -hmm. So from really cool graphics to engineering graphics to showcase uh, a really cool point about simulation, where now we will actually be simulating water on a GPU. And you can wow. see it looks and feels real. It does, def definitely. Has Quite this ever been done before? Uh, yeah, there are a lot of companies, especially like NCA, NASA, that leverage our simulation technology to do real-time simulations. Yeah. In this case, the GPU is doing nothing but <coughs> calculating all these points mathematically to do ah, real simulation of water. Sure. Tidal wave! <laughs> We can go ahead and create waves, and since real physics parameters are actually encompassed into our oh, gaming wow. engines, we can actually Whoa. go ahead and change things like gravity. Oh yeah, <laughs> space time. <Yep. laughs> so that's how game developers are able to send you to different uh, ecosystems, and like Mass Effect Andromeda, you can visit a whole galaxy yeah. with different gravities and different parameters, Whoosh. all happening simultaneously on a GPU. <laughs> that is incredible. It looks. Completely real. Mm -hmm. All the way down to the second big pillar, which is rendering for mm -hmm. us. Uh, and we actually provide a lot of technologies firsthand for rendering. Mm, uh, I see. In this case, what you're going to see is an artificial intelligence uh, decipher and help you accelerate the rendering process to give you real time rendering under a couple of seconds. Okay. So this typical process used to take about eight to 10 hours where mm -hmm. a person used to click render, go home and come back. Go to home, sleep, frame, have, sleep a meal. have a breakfast, have a meal, yep, come back yep. next day, and actually come to a finished frame. <laughs> yep. And for movie special effects, uh, they actually used to stitch 24 of those together to give you a fully CGI movie. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole reason NVIDIA has been winning special effect Oscars for 10 years, no matter what movie title, mm -hmm. because of technology like this. So now, mm. instead of waiting for eight to 10 hours, as the g person moves around the scene, you can actually see the GPU will render the scene in just a couple of seconds with using artificial intelligence on the right side. Oh, I see. So in under 10 seconds, it actually has a finished frame off the scene that you were looking to render. Mm -hmm. So it helps designers iterate on design faster. Much so faster. So that if they w did not like a particular scene, they can change, iterate, and actually complete the design a lot faster than they did sure. before. That's mind-blowing. What is the technical speed difference there? Uh, so uh, you're looking at a speed up of roughly about uh, three times. Three times. Yeah. Which will save people a lot of time, a lot of, time. A lot of money, a lot of headaches. Headaches, yeah. <laughs> Great job. So, typically, you would have a set of instructions called programs that you would feed to your computers, and mm -hmm. they will follow that very strictly. Mm -hmm. But now, with the new technology called deep learning, which is a segment of artificial intelligence, we now give computers right. large sets of data, right. so they can pick and choose what tools to use to solve a particular problem. Okay. So in this case, this is an image recognition AI, which we showcase to help you understand how deep learning functions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And these are called neural networks because they're kindly loosely ba based on your brains okay. and how they function. Uh, so, uh, in this case, uh, we actually used, uh, training was done by 1.2 million pictures, mm -hmm. and we played a game with the computer. Okay. We showed it a picture and told it what the picture was, like flashcards. Okay. Right? So we showed it a bow tie, said bow tie. Okay. Showed it a tennis ball, said tennis ball. Mm -hmm. Right? Showed it a fire truck, said fire truck. Mm -hmm. And showed it so on, showed it 1.2 million pictures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, on a DGX station, 
uh, this uh, AI took about 40 minutes to an hour to tell to say confidently, okay, I can distinguish between thousand objects. A thousand objects. Yeah. Okay. So you can distinguish between these two, right? Based yep. on your human learning and knowledge. Immediately, yeah. The same way, in one hour, it was able to distinguish between thousand different objects. Wow. Wow. So now we're going to do the second part of the AI called inferencing. Mm -hmm. So now we go ahead and present it with a fresh picture of an ambulance, and it comes back and says with 95% confident. That it's an ambulance. Ah, that's what that is. Ninety-five percent. Okay. Mm -hmm. And out of the thousand objects that it knew, it kind of highlighted one of the objects right here. I see. So, which would be the ambulance? Which would be the ambulance? Exactly. So, if we actually go in, we can actually <coughs> see these were the nine best examples which taught the computer what an ambulance was. Mm -hmm. So, there are a few advantages here versus traditional programming. Uh, the same way, if I show you a fire truck from one side or one or two pictures of fire truck, you can mm -hmm. tag and label a fire truck anywhere. Mm -hmm. The same way can AIs. In this case, the, all the data set that we gave it was ambulances from the front. Uh, it never saw an ambulance from the back. I see. We're still 95% confident, the same way you are. As sure, a that that would be an ambulance. ambulance. Yep. Yep. The same way, if I ask you, what is this, what would you say? I would say that's a bow tie. Bow tie, right? Fashionable uh, bow tie. Bow tie, right? So you went through certain operations there, right? You actually went to a parallel operation of mm -hmm. looking at the shape, the size, mm -hmm. the texture, and then your knowledge base to come to a conclusion was a bow tie. Correct. Uh, all simultaneously, mm -hmm. right? So the same way if I ask you, what is this, what would just you say? A dog treat. <laughs> <laughs> all right, yeah, that's another name for it. So, but if you really want to label it as a human, what would you say? <laughs> I would say tennis ball. Tennis ball, right? So again, you actually went under a second, right? Mm -hmm. And you looked at all those things because you didn't have to go through tons and tons of if then else, mm -hmm. if then that. Sure. If, then if it's which. not this, then yeah. it's not that. It's not I got that. You. So that actually adds a lot of latency to the program altogether. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So now you will see the computer do the same things uh -huh. with artificial intelligence. Interesting. The same way at the same Let's speeds that you actually did. So we actually do real time inferencing. Bow tie, hammer, shovel. Bow tie. Uh, if you can see the whole thing, it will definitely be uh, a bow tie. Loafer. <laughs> bow tie. You can see. Yeah. It's and it fairly keeps accurate. going up there, yeah? yeah? Most definitely. I love it. But you can see, it'll do the same for the tennis ball. I wanted to say dog toy. Lemon. Uh, but you can see it's calling it a lemon, right? A yep. little bit because the lighting in the room is a little low. What impresses me about this one is lemon and then Granny Smith. Yeah, for they're, they're all very close. Yeah. And if it wasn't as intelligent as it is, you could say that looks like kind of a Granny Smith. Yep, yeah. But that's only point point zero, four, point 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 four, zero four. Yeah. But it understands context. So if I actually show it, my tennis ball actually comes with a few logos and things like that. It'll never go closer to Granny Smith. It'll go never. closer to exactly. golf ball. Yep. And it'll be 100% on the tennis ball. Yep. Wow. I want to play this game all day. <laughs> Our artificial intelligence needs to be smart enough to encounter things, especially in the automotive space, mm -hmm. things that it had never seen before. Mm -hmm. So in this case, we have an example of this. This is our shield controller. Mm -hmm. So the computer has never seen the shield controller and has never been even trained on a shield control controller. Mm -hmm. But the same way, if I ask you what is this, what would you say? A remote control. A controller, right? Yep. So even though you've never seen this particular one, you actually know what it is. Mm -hmm. The same way AIs have this contextual ability of tagging and flagging things that they've never seen before. Hmm. Joystick, power drill. Right, so you can see it's Binoculars. fairly confident that it's a joystick. Yeah. And if I go and look at the highlighted pixel underneath, uh -huh. this is what the computer thinks is a joystick to it. Sure. Right? Which makes sense. Yeah, but they are both worlds apart. Yes. Right? In terms yes. of computer vision. Right? You cannot write feature detectors to come from there to there. Right. But it picked up on the tiniest details that a human being would overlook, like the color palettes on the Xbox shape pattern of the buttons have mm -hmm. not changed in twenty years. Yes. These thumb pad size have shrunk, but they've actually overall not changed. Uh, they're still there. they're still circular in shape. Right. So it came to a conclusion from twenty years ago you use these devices to play video games. Mm -hmm. And today, you use a device like that to play a video game without ever having to see the other one. It's like saying, this is, my guess is a joystick. Well, why, computer, do you think it's a joystick? Well, here are the reasons why. Why, exactly. The buttons, the colors, colors. the pads, yeah. and the actual joystick bars. Yeah. Very smart. Yeah. So all the way down, we, we showcase this AI as a helpful example to help you understand how deep learning kind of functions. Uh, but we have other AIs that can actually do some serious work. We have AIs that can actually track logos uh, across a live <coughs> video feed. In this case, this is done with, in partnership with SAP, mm -hmm. where it'll actually provide you live analytics 
uh, for advertising uh, in terms of any live event. Uh, and it'll showcase how many times and how much coverage did you get oh, from your particular brand. Sure. Yep. And we call this SAP Brand Impact a part of SAP HANA. That's a great application. Wow. In Eurosport, 79.7% .7 exposure. Yep. So if I was Volvo in this space, I would not be happy with my advertising space. Mm -hmm. But if I was, I was Honda, I would be pretty impressed. And you can see if they're overcharging you. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Or undercharging you. So you get live analytics. Yeah, that's great. But it could be any kind of live feed that you want to recognize an image or an object on. So it could be a camera looking for particular things or mm -hmm. particular objects. And GPUs can not only do one video feed at the time, they mm -hmm. can actually do multiple video feeds simultaneously. Uh, in this case, uh, we're going to populate the screen with okay. roughly about 64 video clips. 64, because why not 65? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we actually wanted to show you an example of a live security okay. feed uh, or a live network. In this case, sure. uh, if I ask you what is happening on the wall, what would you say? Chaos. No, uh, no, I would say, exactly. yeah, basically Noise chaos. for you, right? Yeah. Because they're switching so uh -huh. fast and so <laughs> yeah. quickly. It is very hard for even one or even all of us put together to keep track of the whole wall. Yeah. So, but for AIs, this is a very trivial task. With just one click, it can actually tag and label each one of those video clips coming in with meaningful information. In real time, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So it's depending on the platform you have, if you have something like a DGX1, you can process up to 100 video feeds all simultaneously. Mm -hmm. And you can also do some interesting things like real-time alerts. So you can alert authorities in real time oh, okay. about, say, Says fire forest fire across the board. Sure. Which is becoming a havoc in California these days, oh, right? I know, so. I know, I know. At the same time, Facebook uh -huh. leverages our technology firsthand to actually censor suicides before they hit Facebook Live. Wow. As they're absorbing millions of videos every second mm -hmm. to their network so mm -hmm. that they actually can censor suicides before anybody else gets to see them. That's, that's great. At a the good same step time, in the right direction anyway. We as humans are still much more smarter than computers, right? So we can actually make much more detailed. I'd like to think so. Yeah, uh, I would like to think so too. <laughs> Singularity is still a little far out. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but we can still make much more detailed inferences. Where mm -hmm. now the computer is pulling out all the railways for uh, us from the video feed mm -hmm. and highlighting it for us, so that now we can come to the conclusion if a train is stopped, why could it have been stopped? What are the right. reasons behind it? Right. Right. And you can do detailed inferencing at the same time. Mm -hmm. So you might think it takes a large supercomputer to run artificial intelligence. It's actually not true. Our tiny little chip called the Jetson can actually do quite a bit. And in this case, it's a credit card sized platform that gives you one teraflop of physical Oh my god. And it has Wi-Fi, gigabit internet all on board. So it makes it an ideal solution for autonomous drones, sure, intelligent sure. robots, and things like that. That is absolutely incredible. All from this little tiny chip. Sure. You call it the Jetson. Yep, it's yeah. called the Jetson. Yeah. Like um, George Jetson. Like George Jetson, because the future <laughs> yeah. is upon yeah, us. Upon us. I want to thank you for being here. Thank you so much for coming and visiting of course. us. And thank you so much for taking the time. Anytime. I'm, I'm happy to come back anytime. And I'm really excited to see the future of artificial intelligence. And I'm constantly impressed by what NVIDIA has to do in the tech world. For more on NVIDIA, check out NVIDIA.com and across all their social media. And for more from Scan Computers, check out scan.co.uk. My name is David Bertolami, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>